Hello everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level. Today I'm just going to show you uh, how to use the dual quaternion option in Blender or Preserve Volume, as it's called under the modifier, and just some use cases for this option and how you can use it in your rigs. Let's start with a very simple example here. I have this sphere object, and if I rotate this down, you can see how I'm deforming that and I'm losing volume over that deformation. If I just click on the object, I'll flip to weight paint mode, and I have a very smooth weight paint from the top here with a value of 1 all the way to a value of 0 at about halfway. So I'll just duplicate this over, and I'll click on the object here and just flip to my modifier tab, and there's this preserve volume option, which is dual quaternion underneath the armature modifier. If you hover over it, the tooltip is deform rotation interpolation with quaternions. So I'll flip that on, and immediately you can see the difference between these two rigs. This one here has this really nice, and I'm maintaining that volume through a rotation, and this rig over here does not have that option, and I'm losing volume as I'm rotating. You can also see that when I rotate backwards, that so this has a linear interpolation as it's coming back, and I'm crushing the volume here. This one, on the other hand, maintains this volume really nice through that rotation back to its original spot. This does not affect translation. If I translate these up, they are exactly the same. Preserve volume will only affect the rotation change on your joints. Let's look at something a bit more advanced. Here is a leg with a fairly simple animation on it and a really smooth weight um, on the actual knee area. If I just flip to weight paint, you can see that I have a really smooth weight through there and I'm losing volume through that knee. So let's duplicate this over. And on this leg, I'm going to flip on preserve volume and we'll just look at the difference. So I'll come here and I'll turn on preserve volume. So immediately you can see how that knee has a much nicer shape through that rotation. And I'm not losing any volume through there either. Even back here, I'm getting a nicer shape. Now there's only so far I can get with weight painting on this without adding a second bone or a shape key. So with the preserve volume, what I can also do is add a driven key. I'll show you what I mean right now. So with the leg selected, I'm just going to flip to my shape key, and I'm just going to add a new key here. When I go to edit mode, though, the leg's going to go back to its initial pose. Under the modifier, there's two options here. Uh, one's called display modifier in edit mode, and the second one is adjust edit cage in modifier result as well. That's going to let me edit the mesh while the armature is activated. So what I'm going to do is just come here and clean up this shape. So I'm not going to do too much on this. I'm just making a really nice sharp shape on that knee and just adjusting it a little bit. Now this gets dangerous when you're weight painting because you want to do this when you know your weight painting is complete or you'll find you'll go back and forth a lot between adjusting your shape and your weight painting settings. All right, that's looking really nice like that. So now I have a really nice shape through that knee. There's one problem though, and that this shape is activated all the time. So we're going to use a driver to activate that shape through the rotation. If I click on the knee and I right click on the X rotation, I can do copy as new driver. Then on the mesh, I'll go to the shape key and on key one, I'll right click and do paste driver. If I just open up the drivers panel here and go to that key, it's working, it's activating, but it's a rotational input. So I'm getting that value of one pretty much right away. So like frame nine, where I want that to activate at 90 degrees. To achieve this, I'm gonna do a scripted expression. And the first thing we have to do is convert the rotation Euler to a rotation. So I'm gonna input degrees here and put the rotation Euler variable in parentheses. Now the input that I'm getting out of that driver is 90 degrees. You're not seeing that on the shape key updating because it is clamped at one, so it can only go to one at its maximum. So I need to do one more thing. Under degrees, rotation Euler, I'm just going to divide this by 90 degrees. So when the rotation is at 90, it's actually going to be a value of 1 for my shape key. Now, as I rotate that leg, I'm activating that shape key through the entire rotation. So if we look at all three legs again, you can see the difference between the default setting, the preserve volume turned on, and the preserve volume turned on with a shape key here. You can do a shape key on the option where I don't have preserve volume turned on. But I find that doing a shape key and moving the mesh as little as possible is better with the preserve volume just because I'm getting a nicer starting point to adjust it for that shape here. There's one more thing you may want to do with the preserve volume option, and that's to limit it to a certain area. So I'm just going to add another group here, and I call this preserve. And I'll just select this area around the knee right here. I'm just going to click assign. 
So if I flip to wave paint mode, I have this area where I've assigned the mesh to the preserve group here. If I flip back to my modifiers, I can actually assign this under the vertex group to preserve. So now this is only affecting the knee area. What I can do is add a second modifier, another armature. I can give it the same armature input. And I can give it the same vertex group input preserve, but I can click on this button right here. And this is going to invert the group selection. So it means that this area here has preserve volume turned on. And this area right here on the hips and the heel has preserve volume turned off. All with using one armature with two modifiers. Let's look at one last example on a production ready rig. This is the Vincent rig and this is built with the Blend Rig 5. And I'll leave a link in the description if you want to download this rig and try it out on your own as well. I really like the way that this rig deals with preserve volume as they have it turned off on different modifiers. So if I activate the finger control here and I'll just rotate it down as well. Now let's flip on wireframe and we'll look at the preserve volume option. So on the armature panel, preserve volume is turned on. And you can see as I dial it on and off how I'm getting a really nice volume through that finger shape without doing any weight painting or blend shapes here. It's a really nice shape on that finger. So it does a really good job of just sort of maintaining your structure through a rotation. Now the face on this character does not have preserve volume turned on. It is a different mesh, so if I just open up the jaw here, and I'll just give it a bit of a smile. So this character here under armature does not have preserve volume turned on, and even as I toggle it, there's barely any change on that mesh. That's because the face is mostly dealing with translation and position change, rather than a rotational change. So the quaternion deformation will not activate. Anyway, I just wanted to show you some things with the preserve volume option, how you might use it in your rigs. And just to go through a simple example all the way to something more advanced. Big thank you to my patrons for supporting me in this video. It's because of them that I can continue to make these videos. Head on over there if you want to see exclusive content, behind the scenes, and even early access to all my videos. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.